Section 214 is titled Proof by Contradiction. We're going to be looking at pages 8 through 10 today. And um, we're going to be asking the question, what if I assume that the opposite is true? Okay, so there's something called the color square game. And the objective is to figure out the arrangement of colored squares on a 3x3 three three grid or a 4x4 four four grid using as few clues as possible. So the rules are basically in a 3x3 three three color square game, each of the nine squares are colored. They're either going to be red, green, or blue. However, all the squares of the same color must be continuous, meaning they're linked along at least one side. The diagram demonstrates what is meant by continuous. So continuous means they're going to be linked on at least one side. They could even be linked on two sides, but you can't have them linked uh, just by a corner. Okay, That's not allowed, and certainly off by, its, off by itself is not allowed. So in a 4x4 in a four four color square game, there are four red squares, four green squares, four blue squares, and four, ye four yellow squares. Again, all the squares of the same color must be continuous. To get information about a color square, you ask what is in row. So rows would be, whoop, let's go back. Rows would be going this way. I can't hear. I can't even hear myself. Sorry. So the rows, row one would be this way, row two would be this way, row three would be this way. And then these would be the columns, column one, column two, column three. And so you would say, what is in row one? What is in column two? You will then be given a number, total number of squares for, of each color in that row or column, but not necessarily in the order that they appear in the secret arrangement. For reference, rows are numbered from top to bottom and columns are numbered from left to right. Each member of your team could create one three by three and one four by four and then you would play okay so basically possible arrangements you could have is is here's your blues you could have three blues over here three reds down here and then three greens okay they would just have to be in a row and they would have to touch on at least one side okay so if you have colors, great. If you don't have colors, just write B, 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 R, 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 G, 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 okay? And then over here, I used uh, orange. So this is B, 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 O, 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 G, 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 R, 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 okay? So fill in the possible arrangements for the colors shown right here. And I'll give you just a minute to do that of page nine. And at the top of page nine, it's going to be referring back to that little game. Okay, so question 34 says, Rihanna is stuck on the color square game. So she asks her teammate Wilma for a hint. Wilma says, you should know that the bottom right corner is uh, must be green. Rihanna disagrees with Wilma. She says, I know the green can't go in the top right corner, but I think in the middle right square should could be green. Assume that Rihanna is correct and complete the color square game. What happens? Okay. So underneath that third column, there should be one green and two reds. And Rihanna said that the middle one must be green. So in that middle box, write G or color it green, which means that the other two must be red. And then in the first row, there's two blues and one red. So there's already a red there, so the other two must be blue. So based on this assumption that this can't be continuous, and Rihanna is incorrect, and Wilma is correct, okay? This is something called proof by contradiction. All right, in problem 34, you first assume that Wilma's conjecture was false and that Rihanna's was true. However, 
That assumption led to a contradiction of the color square game rules that showed your assumption was false, and therefore Wilma's conjecture was true. This type of reasoning is called a proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction. If you have a highlighter, highlight it. If you don't have a highlighter, circle the words proof by contradiction. Okay, so to prove a conjecture, you start by assuming it is false. If your assumption leads to an impossibility or a contradiction of other facts, then the conjecture must be true. You will use proof by contradiction to prove the converses of some familiar geometric relationships. Part A says, in the diagram at right, what is the relationship between the angles X and Y? Write a conditional statement <coughs> or arrow diagram to justify your answers. Okay? In the diagram at right, these two lines have a little carrot showing that they're parallel. So X and Y are supplementary. Okay? If the parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the same side interior are supplementary. We learned that in chapter one. It's just a proven theorem. Okay? So you write it down and you assume it's true. Part B says write the converse of the theorem you used in part A. Is the converse true? So now we're going to get the converse, meaning we're going to take the if and then, and we're going to swap them. So the converse says, if the same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines cut by a transversal are parallel. Okay? This one happens to be true either way. Okay? So you say true, page 10. So at the top of the page 10, we have question 36. It says, Maria was trying to draw a diagram for part C of problem 35. And she decided it would be easier to that's it, work with an actual angle measure instead of X and Y. She drew the diagram at right. Part A says, why do lines AB and CD intersect, inter, I can't pronounce that word today, intersect in Maria's diagram. Assume that they are not parallel. So lines that are not parallel, at some point, they will intersect. Okay? So because the theorem says that the lines are parallel, you have to assume that they're not parallel to do proof by contradiction. So you assume the opposite of what it says. So in this case, the lines will intersect. And here's what happens. Part B says, what is the measure of angle BED? Okay? So we know that triangles have 180 degrees total. And if you look at the angle up at the top, the angle up here, you have 100 the angle down here, you have 80. Add those two together, you get 180. That means this angle over here would have to be zero. And guess what? Having an angle that is zero is what? Not possible, okay? Zero degree angle would lay flat, would make a straight line, okay? It's not a thing, okay? So part C, what do your results from part B tell you about Maria's diagram? That they must be parallel, okay? Because we force the opposite to happen, saying that they're not parallel, we proved by contradiction that they must be parallel, okay? Any questions on 36? Move it up a little bit to question 37. Now you will genera generalize your reasoning from problem thir uh, 36. Part A, in the diagram at right, the same side interior angles, YBA 
and BRZ are supplementary. So if angle BAZ is X amount of degrees, write an expression for what would the other angle be, YBA. Whatever measure they tell us it is, we're just going to subtract it from 180. We always start with 180 and we subtract. So like if they told us it was 30, we would go 180 minus 30, that would be, mean it was 150. If they told us it was 45, we would have 180 minus 45. Subtract it, and that would give us the other measure. What is that? 135. Okay? So whatever angle measure they tell us, we subtract it from 180. Everybody with me so far? Good. Okay. Part B. To prove your conjecture from problem 35 by contradiction, you must start by assuming the, contradict the conclusion is false. That is, you must assume the opposite of what you are trying to prove. Write your assumption. That is, write the opposite of what you are trying to prove. We're going to assume that BY and AZ are not parallel. Okay? So for part C, they want us to draw a diagram showing that information. From part A and assume that part, uh, and your assumption from part B. Then show that your assumption leads to an impossibility. Okay? So if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, here's your same side interior angles, they're going to be supplementary. But if those lines are not parallel, that's going to happen the same thing that happened up in question 36. If those two are supplementary, that's going to force that to be zero, so they must be parallel. And our conclusion for part D, it says, now that you've proved the conjecture, you can restate it as a theorem. Write your conjecture as a theorem. And so you would say something like, if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines cut by a transversal are parallel. And then we're done.